the truth is out there. You just might need to pay attention. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 brilliant X-Files secrets and easter eggs. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at the little details and in-jokes scattered throughout the long-running and popular sci-fi show. Number 10. Lost Friends In the third episode of Season 10, there are lots of in-story and out-story nods. One is when Agent Mulder wakes up from a bout of binge drinking lying against a headstone in a graveyard. The name on the stone is Kim Manners. The epitaph? Let's kick it in the ass. This was in honor of one of the show's former directors and producers, Kim Manners, who passed away, and the grave inscription was his signature catchphrase. Sharp-eyed viewers also spotted the name Jack Hardy, a former first assistant director on the show who had also passed. Number 9. Kurt Crawford First appearing in the season 4 premiere as a group of eerily silent children, and again halfway through the same season in the episode Memento Mori, Kurt Crawford, or more precisely the Crawfords, plural, were a series of alien-human hybrids created as part of a colonization project. The name rang a bell for some. Morning, Mr. Crawford. Crawford was also the last name of the agent in charge of the Behavioral Science Unit in the Hannibal Lecter series. And it seemed like this might be the fictional in-joke reference, but actually, Kurt Crawford is the name of a real-life member of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Crawfords of the X-Files were named directly after series creator Chris Carter's contact at the FBI. So many Crawfords. Number 8. Breakfast at Tiffany's Back in 1995, Lynn Redgrave, Stephen King, and David Duchovny went toe-to-toe -to -toe on a celebrity episode of the popular game show, Jeopardy. What are frogs? Right. What are frogs? Despite some amusing mutterings, what are frogs? Duchovny did pretty well and was in the lead going into Final Jeopardy. But on what Alex Trebek clearly thought was an easy question, only King was able to guess Truman Capote's novel, Breakfast at Tiffany's, as the answer for the win obviously thinking that someone in the alien chasing duo ought to brush up on their reading, just a few months later we spot Scully reading the very book that stumped Mulder. Perhaps she can tell him all about it over brunch. Number 7. Twin Peaks Jose Chung's From Outer Space is one of the series' most creative episodes, in which a teenage couple claims to have been abducted by aliens, who were again abducted by scarier aliens. The whole thing is a little surreal, and told by a series of unreliable narrators. In one scene, Mulder enters a diner and orders slice after slice of pie while asking his questions. You ever experienced a period of missing time? You ever had the suspicion that you've been abducted by aliens? It sure reminds us of another pie-loving FBI agent of the 90s, Dale Cooper from Twin Peaks. While this one can't be 100% confirmed, for fans of both series, it feels like an in-joke for sure. I've been looking forward to this pie. I've heard so much about it. Number 6. Piper Maru A French salvage ship, the Piper Maru, limped into port in San Diego yesterday, all the way from the North Pacific. In this classic episode, a French salvage team on the ship Piper Maru come across a World War II wreck at the bottom of the ocean. Upon investigating, one of the crewmen becomes infected with the Black Oil, a creepy series staple. It is an important episode in the development of Agent Scully, but the episode had added significance for actress Gillian Anderson, as the salvage ship was named after her daughter who had been born during the production of the previous season. Number 5. The Red Speedo The episode Dwayne Barry is a memorable fan favorite for many reasons, but one of them came wrapped up in a little red package. Interrupted during a fitness routine, Agent Mulder exits a swimming pool clad in a red Speedo. The head-turning moment became iconic, as did the Speedo, even if Duchovny regretted it somewhat. Years later, as one of the many jokes in the third episode of the Season 10 reboot, the showrunners decided to bring back the brightly hued briefs when the creepy proprietor of a motel takes a page out of Norman Bates' book and the audience gets a quick peek at the scarlet garment. Number 4. Stoner's Redux Some things never really change. Dude, that's some good crap. <laughs> this anonymous pair of slacker teenagers on a quest for a good high first appeared in the skin-crawling episode, War of the Coprophages. The fume-huffing stoners made a second appearance just 10 episodes later in Quagmire, another fun monster of the week outing, in which the kids expand their intoxicant palate to include frogs and the licking of them. Oh. In the 2016 revival, two seemingly random burnouts muse on life and whether they've wasted theirs by getting wasted all the time. But fans recognized actors Tyler Labine and Nicole Parker right away. Dude, they're even in the same clothes. Number 3. Recursive Everything to begin with, this Russian doll-like episode was written and directed by Mulder, aka David Duchovny himself. Airing in the middle of the seventh season, when the series was already beginning to wind down, 
The entire episode is filled with self-referential jokes and Easter eggs for longtime viewers. And all this yellow is ambient sound that we habitually tune out. It's uh, the hum of my hardware, Mulder's porn tapes on pause. A friend of Skinner's wishes to create a movie based on some of the X-Files cases. What results is a movie in an episode that also refers back to the actual episode being aired by the end. Other delightful asides include Mulder as portrayed by comedian Gary Shandling, Taya Leone, Duchovny's then-wife, portraying Scully, and Duchovny's dog in its own guest appearance. Speaking of Hollywood, I think that Taya Leone has a little crush on you. Uh, yeah, right, like Taya Leone's ever gonna have a crush on me. Number 2. Moby Dick Why did you name the dog Quickwood? Throughout the series, there are references made to Herman Melville's novel Moby Dick, the tale of a fanatical sea captain and his hunt for the great white whale, a trait that is reflected in Mulder and his need for proof of alien life. Everything takes on a, a, a warped significance to fit your megalomaniacal cosmology. Incidentally, most of the callbacks have to do with Scully, including her nickname, Starbuck, a character from the novel, Scully's dog, Queequeg, the harpoonist in the novel, and her father, whose nickname was Ahab. Most recently, in Mulder and Scully Meet the Monster, there is another dog named after a Moby Dick character, Dagoo, which, let's be honest, is a great dog name. You wanna come home with me? It practically memes itself. Number 1. The Immortal Dana Scully Back in Season 3, the agents encounter a man named Clyde Bruckman, who claims that he can see how a person will die. Scully, ever the skeptic, does not believe him, but is later tempted to ask how she will die. To which he replies with a wry grin, You don't. Although the showrunners initially never meant for this to be taken literally, fans latched on to the idea of an immortal Dana Scully. This idea was re-examined in the episode, Tythonus, where it does seem that death has passed her over. People don't live forever. It's clearly something that weighs on Scully's mind, because in season 10 she quips to Mulder, in response to concerns about her safety while tracking a serial killer, You forget, I'm a